welcome to RPG RPG podcast. Um, episode number eight, I believe. Um, this is Fung, and I have with me Haven. How are you going, oh. Haven? Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm really cold. It's super <laughs> cold in Sydney. <laughs> My hands are freezing. <laughs> well, it's winter after all, so it has to be cold. <laughs> yeah, I got a blanket around me. I don't have a heater in this room, so. Yeah, um, I haven't turned on my heater yet tonight um, because um, the thing is, once I turn on the heater, the the cat will just monopolize the heater. Oh, well, he okay. just embrace the heater. <laughs> well, that's a smart cat. <laughs> so, oh, uh, sometimes I'm afraid that he might just burn himself to fire, like、oh, burst into、okay. flames and stuff, because he is kind of a longish hair, like medium hair kind of cat. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh. And so, he, sometimes when he was lying in front of the heater, when I pat him, he is like burning hot. I don't know how he can stand <laughs> that heat. <laughs> maybe, oh,、uh, high heat tolerance. Maybe that's. I guess that's.、Mm, that's kind of worrying, actually. <laughs> yeah, so I try not to turn it on too early, so that he would be just lying in front of it doing nothing, and then at the end of the day, at the end of the night, he bursts into flame. That sounds. <laughs> that sounds really <laughs> horrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, speaking of bursting into flame, <laughs> what、um, RPGs have you been playing recently? Have you been playing much? Yeah, I'm still playing. Well, still the, playing the three that I'm playing. I'm still playing Skyrim.、Mm, so I'm continuing with my Skyrim, and my has survived over thirty hours. I think I did a lot better this time after all the tips everyone was giving me after my colossal failure last time when I didn't know what I was doing at all. <laughs> so now I managed to go. I, I, at the moment, I'm level seventeen. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So I'm just trying to figure out, like, in the progress, I'm process trying to figure out how I want my character to be, because、mm. it's kind of like a lot of options how you want your character to be. But then at the same time, is in different areas or different dungeons or different part of the story, you actually need a different skill to actually.、Yeah. Yeah, so it's some kind of, like along the way because I haven't been following the main quest for a little while.、Now. I went off to do the Winterhold one,、mm-hmm. and and then I found out that oh, so I started off my my well I I activated the Thief Stone. So、mm-hmm. if I use Thief skills, the experience will go up quicker.、Mm-hmm. But then along the way, I didn't find a lot of. At the, especially at the beginning of the main quest, I didn't find a lot of areas that I actually need to use stealth skill at all.、Mm. So I haven't been using it. And then now, in the, I'm in a point in the Winter Hole quest that I need to. I find out that actually, if I stealth around, then the the enemy will be less deadly in a way that because I can actually like surprise attack one of them, like take them out one by one.、Mm. So I started, yeah. So it's, I started using it、uh, because I, I couldn't get through that area for、uh, for a little while because, like, when they when I as soon as I show up, they just come and ambush me.、Mm. And you know, in Skyrim, when they when you got ambushed, the chance of you getting out of an ambush is pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so then I I always experimenting, trying to see what I can do, and then I eventually went. I stealth, and I find out that actually, if I move slowly, they would not like at the same time notice me.、Mm. So I've been doing a lot of stealthing and and stealthing in this area, and and then suddenly my my sneaking went up from like fifteen to twenty three in, in in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I think、um, stealthing and using a bow is a really popular,、um, I guess. Gameplay style for Skyrim.、Mm-hmm. I actually, I'm not a very patient person, so I just run in there with a mace and a shield、yeah. <laughs> and just beat things up with heavy armor. But、um, yeah,、um, I did play like that for a while, but then I got really like bored of it because、mm-hmm. as soon as I got caught, because I hadn't really focused on anything else, I just、yeah. get completely demolished by the enemy、yeah. as soon as they saw me. So, or maybe I was just bad at sneaking. But、um, yeah, it was fun for a while, and it's fun to、um, take down enemies、mm-hmm. like with one shot with the bow. But if you miss, or if like it just doesn't work, it's just so frustrating. Yeah, and I, I actually I, I after I learned the summon spell, I actually summon a lot. 
Mm. So I just use the summon to send, uh, send the summon in to actually distract them while trying to uh, attack them at the same time. <laughs> you know, there's a trick to raise, I think it's one-handed or bow and conjuring at the same time because you can conjure weapons. Yeah. So if you conjure, I think, um, swords or bow or whatever, it also raises that stat for that weapon. Oh, really? So, yeah, so you can level up twice as fast using that. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. My um, boyfriend found that out with his gameplay. So, um, oh, because I, I I learned a spell called Conjure X, which I think is a one-handed yeah. weapon, and I use a maze. Mm. So probably if I actually use Conjure X, actually it would help me a lot better mm. in terms of like um, raising the stats for both, like the raising the skills for both areas. Mm. Yeah, mm. actually, that would work. I think the the um, power of the axe goes up as well with your conjuration um, level mm-hmm. or something like that. So it's relative to how strong you are. Ah, so you don't have to keep changing the weapon. So it's kind of ah, cool. Yeah, that's something I, I need to... I mean, because I, I, I use bow and maze, but most of the time I use maze in a way that because my companion is Spaniel who, is, who uses bow a lot. Mm. So I just like use him to to use both to attack the enemies while I conjure the familiar and then try to attack the enemies using shield bash and, <laughs> and mace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then when when this kind of text is kind of sometimes didn't work in a way that because when you're in tight corridors, there's no space for you to run around. Yeah. Yeah, and then because uh, Vandal is using bows, he has he has to stay light back. So mm. I'll be the buffer for all the enemies attacking. And every time when there's an ambush happening, I will just get killed. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, what kind of armor are you wearing? Are you wearing light armor, heavy armor, or? Well, I started with light armor, but light armor is a really butcher. So I started to use heavy armor now. Mm. But heavy armor slow me down quite a bit. Yeah, it does. Um, if you keep wearing it for a while, it actually there's um, you know how you can have the skills or the attributes. I'm pretty sure there's one where it makes it weigh nothing, so you can just run around yeah. in it. Yeah, but so it takes I've, a while to get to it. Yeah, I have uh, checked that particular skill tree, and I look at that. When you actually reach seventy, you have an option to to upgrade it to a point that the heavy armor has not has no bearing on how how like how fast you run. Mm. Yeah, so I'm just waiting for that to show up. I think I'm at the moment my heavy armor is around forty one. Mm. Okay, that's not too far away. It does take yeah, because I got attack a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's okay then. Well, that's what the heavy armor is there for. So yeah. Hmm. So I'm cool. just trying to refine the heavy armor as much as possible and do all those kind of things. Uh, and I don't know, alchemy is not as much fun in this game as compared to Tales of Grace. Because Alch- alchemy here is, I, I don't know, maybe I haven't actually learned a lot of other things, but at the moment it's they're just about making potions and stuff. Yeah, it's only making potions. Um, they can help you in battle, like particular potions, but um, I never really used alchemy that much, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I just, like, it's a quick way to get um, levels because you just keep collecting plants and stuff and then you mix whatever the hell you want and that makes your alchemy skill go up mm-hmm. but that also gives you points to level up as well but um, otherwise I don't really use the potions that I get I sell them for a lot of money mm-hmm, that's about mm-hmm. it so it's kind of like a cash making thing and a leveling up thing mm-hmm. yeah so I, I I use blacksmithing to to make stuff and sell them. Yeah. And I usually collect a lot of those mage ropes in a way that they sell for really good money and they only weigh one kilogram or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> so I thought that for, for, one, for, for, for taking up one stamina point, it is actually quite value for money. So every time when I kill a mage, I just like take his rope with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and I started doing some enchanting too. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, but the enchanting at the moment is not very effective. I mean, whenever I, I enchant something, it goes up pretty quickly. It's just at the same time, is I don't think the skills are like level up to a point that I can because you 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 bound them with soul gems and stuff. But then the the effect is not as good as I thought it would be. And I look at the skill tree. Actually, you need to add points to the skill tree to actually improve the rating and the efficiency of your enchantment. 
Yeah. And I thought, mm, that's too much work. And then you have only one perk every time, and then <laughs> you have to save up those perks for things that you really want. Yeah. Um. When it came to enchanting, I think I, that was the same as like blacksmithing and alchemy. If I needed money, that's kind of the kind of thing I went to. I just enchant stuff with. Mm-hmm anything that I'd find and then I'd sell it for some money. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think I ever used equipment. Oh no, I enchanted equipment to give it to my lackeys. So they would survive as well. Or they had like particular um, attributes on their weapons. Yeah. But other than that, no, I didn't use the equipment. Yeah. So I just gave a weapon to, uh, to my com my companion that actually when he attacks it, it takes, uh, I think it absorbs five points of health from the enemy. Oh yeah. That works so, well, yeah. Yeah, so then he then he could last longer. Yeah, that's a, that's a smart way to do it, yeah. Yeah, but I think I know we need to take a look at the conjuring part. So if I actually conjure X instead of using that familiar, then maybe my one-handed ability would go, far, go up a lot faster. Mm. It, it will, it will. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a very good tip. <laughs> There are some. There are lots of little tricks in Skyrim, but mm-hmm. I just can't remember them all anymore. It's it's been so long since I played it, and I do remember that. Um, pretty sure I racked up seventy two hours, mm-hmm. like more than seventy two hours. Um, just by doing the side quests, I never finished all the side quests, and I only did like three main quests, and then I just ran off into La La Land and did whatever the hell I wanted. Seventy two hours. I was nowhere close to finishing off side quests and nowhere close to finishing the main quest. So I spent a lot of time mm-hmm. on, on Skyrim. Yeah, I mean, the thing yeah. is, um, even the side quest is, a, like, it's very long. I mean, the this one, for example, the Winterhold one, I've been doing it for so long and I still haven't seen the end of it. Mm. It's like, oh, wow, this is... It's more like it's more than just go around fetching things for someone and then the side quest is done. It's like, oh, yeah, that's what's happening and yeah, that's something else is going to happen. So you have to go back and get things done. Mm. And it just go on and on and on and on. Yeah. The some quests chain together really well, but they end up going for like a long time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a really good time sync game. Like, it's a really, really good game. Scary mm-hmm. is. I'm glad that you decided to give it a go, especially since like um, you're playing it in third person, aren't you? Because you get sick on first person. That's that's right. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that's was... good. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Pardon me. Uh, that's that's good because you know you'd be missing out if you didn't at least give Skyrim one go. Yeah, so I mean, after that, um, I bought like a friend, another friend of mine was telling me that, oh, you know, Fallout actually, you can play for third person too, like the uh, the one of the some of the Fallout games. So I went, I walked past uh, Toys R Us the other day, and then I bought um, Fallout New Vegas for like fifteen bucks, and I thought, okay, so probably there's something I would try next. <laughs> yeah, New Vegas is really good. Um, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But Fallout 3 as well is really... Well, obviously, it's really good because everyone keeps raving about it and still loves it. But yeah, New Vegas is a lot of fun. Um, one of the companions is completely overkill, though. Like, he's so overpowered. Uh-huh. Um, he's basically... He's a sniper. Yeah. And he follows you around. And he can see things before mm-hmm. you do. So wow. he'll kill things before you get to it and take your experience. So it's kind of like... He makes things easy because you run around in the desert and he yeah. just kills everything for you before they even reach you. But then you don't get the experience. Um, I'm not sure if you do or not, but um, actually maybe you do get the experience, but it's not fun because you're not killing anything yourself. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah so, um, so I'm still recording my gameplay, like recording like in the written form on my, mm. on my diary. Mm. So uh, I'll see how... I mean, I'm quite happy that I'll... I kind of know what I'm doing, and 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 I'm I am quite happy that, for example, because Vandal actually teaches archery skills too. Oh yeah. So, so whenever I have spare cash, I would just talk to him and ask him to train me. <laughs> oh, that's right. There's people who do that. Totally, yeah. Um, my, I think my companion was. Have you done the um? Were they called the companions? Do you know the people that live like like they're like the fighters guild. Mm-hmm. Um, in wow, I can't even remember the names of the places anymore. But they're like, I think they're the companions or something, and mm-hmm. um, they're the 
I can't actually, I won't say that because it's kind of spoilerish for what oh, they okay. are like. Yeah, but really at the but, moment, yeah. look, I got I got Vando simply because I when I arrived at Riverhood, Riverwood, I I did a favor for one of the girls, and then basically it was a love triangle thing, and then I think the other guy is not. Pretty nice. So I I helped Vando and clear his name, and then he's he said <laughs> start, and then he said that well, if you need my service, just let me know because you helped me to clear my name or something like that. So I said okay, and then he started following me around, and I thought oh, and then during one of the conversations, suddenly he said that if you want to learn about archery, I can teach you, and I said oh, that's great then because I do want to level up archery, but then. Because you can only equip one weapon at a time, so I thought, oh, I need to divide the time between archery and and, and maze, and and then when he said that he can teach me archery, I said, okay, I'll just spend some co- like koha cash on him to to <laughs> level up the archery. Then <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I think I think earlier, um, like the very earlier instances in the game, if you paid someone that was following you. To mm-hmm. teach you skills, you could actually get the money back by looking in their inventory. Oh, really? Yeah, but they took that out. I think I'm pretty sure. Oh. So, heh, heh, heh. Um, <laughs> that was exploited a lot. Oh. I'm sure. That was cool, though. That was cool. There's there was there's lots and lots and lots of glitches in Skyrim that make things hilarious. But um, yeah, yeah. I think, I think there's something wrong with I don't know whether it's my PS3 or my. Skyrim, but then there were time there were once or twice actually the game hang when it got like when you know when and whenever you, I don't know how you play on PC right yeah yeah because on on PS3 that whenever you go into a room it, it start loading and loading and then there were like two or three times actually it just keep on loading and then it just hangs oh. so I don't know whether there's the but I don't have the, that issue with other games, so I don't know whether it's the Skyrim bug or, or actually Skyrim requires too much information exchange between the console and and the disc that actually it has problem. I don't know. Um, I think it's because the game engine that Skyrim was made on doesn't particularly it doesn't work as well. Um, on consoles as it does on PC. It's the same uh-huh. as the new Devil May Cry game. Um, so I think mm-hmm. um, Skyrim is made in Gamebryo, maybe? Or maybe mm-hmm. it's something different. And um, Devil May Cry was made on um, Unreal Engine, and both of them are very um, PC-compatible kind of uh-huh. games. Uh-huh. Like, like, they make very PC-ish yeah. kind of games. So mm-hmm. on, like, it definitely works on console, but it m- mm-hmm. might uh, bug out a lot on console, like more than it does in PC. So uh-huh. um, I don't know. Maybe it's something like that. It's mm-hmm. it's the reason why I bought um, DMC on um, Xbox instead of mm-hmm. uh, PS3 because Unreal works on Microsoft OS a lot better than oh. anything else. So uh, mm-hmm. apparently PS3 version had a lot of problems. Um, oh, really? Xbox had less so, and PC even less so. So, mm-hmm. hmm. yeah. Oh, that's interesting to know. Yeah, I'm still enjoying it, so that's kind of good. I mean, sometimes when you get ambushed, you get frustrated, but then now, to, like like in particular, that dungeon that was so frustrated. Mm. But then eventually I figure out that, oh, actually, if I... If I sneak around them, I can kill them off one by one without having them spot at me and then come to, like, three or four of them come to me in one go. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, it's like learning new things every day with Skyrim. Yeah, it is. It's fun. It's just, it's such a big world, and it's fun to meet all the different characters that they've created in the world because there's loads and loads of NPCs in it. And, yeah, uh, and they really have their own personality. It's not, I think I... I think they really have a lot of things put into this game, you know, whether because a lot of even NPC is not just like you walk to them, they would just make one irrelevant sentence and they actually put some personality into each character. Mm. And even for the NPC, so I thought I, 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 that's something I really appreciate. Yeah, you can get very lost in the world of Skyrim. Hours and hours will suddenly disappear mm-hmm. once you start. Up. Yeah, but then the, the night time is very long in Skyrim as compared to daytime. Well, um, if you think about it, it's because they live in a cold, wintry place. So it's mm-hmm. kind of like in any, I guess if we went to like, I don't know, places in the world where they're closer to, uh, okay. um, 
you know where they have really long also nights and pose. really long days sometimes depending mm-hmm. on what season they're in it's probably something like that That's yeah what I think. probably yeah hmm. good well, so you've been playing Discovery Three too right yes i've been playing oh i keep leaving it and coming back to it mm-hmm. uh because i've already finished the main story but um there's like Disgaea, the reason why we keep talking about Disgaea in every podcast is because it's just an absolutely massive game. It just and goes on and on. <laughs> it does. And there's just so much to it, so many different mechanics. It's such a Japanese Asian game. Like you will learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still not like a hundred percent sure on how the classroom and homeroom works. Oh really? Above, like what reincarnation. Do you have about that? Um well recently so when they talk about classroom world that's when um you go and vote for stuff and then if they disagree um you can fight them that's the classroom world isn't it oh uh, no the, so the class there there are certain things in relation to the class world so for like, class world itself uh is a dungeon based on the character that you use so if you go into a class world, then you actually have to solve puzzles. If you actually clear all the geo blocks in that class world, then you gain a lot more mana than just outside battles. And then you gain a lot more experience. So because as far as I remember in the class world, all the things that you get is just experience, like as bonus. So if you actually clear everything in, in that particular level, then you'll get a lot of um, experience that that's why they encourage that's how it encouraged people to to use class world in a way that because this is also a world that apart from you can level up your your reincarnated characters very quickly it, it's also a place where you can actually learn the skills that is not specific to your class to to that particular class yeah. so for example if i when i started a game i put the archer together in the same, what they call the club, mm-hmm. with the female fighter. Yeah. And the female fighter, they it, it doesn't come with any skills. That, so in the older Disguise game, I think in Disguise 1 and 2, every character can equip any weapon. It's just yeah. that they have different attributes to learn that weapon, and some of them takes a long time to learn a skill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in Disguise 3, they changed it to a way that if... For every single class, they only have a specific set of weapons they can use. Mm. If you use them for other weapons, they would not learn that those weapon skills at all. Mm. But the only way to learn the weapon skills of those um, weapons from, for these classes are that you put them in the same club, go through the class world, and at the end of the class world, you can choose one of the options to actually to know, to find out, like, for example, I want to spend... X amount of honor to learn the skills from my from my club members. Oh. So how for, you, mm-hmm. sorry, how do you get to this classroom or do I have to unlock it or something? Yeah, I think if you pass one of the 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 homeroom motion, yep. then they, they will open up a class world. The class world will be available as on in the in like in the academy. As a, so you talk to a character and then the character will ask, oh, do you want to go to the class world? Like that. <laughs> uh, okay, then maybe I've already unlocked it and I've just not talked to any other NPCs. Yeah. Because I've just but, been grinding through item world right now. For the, was... the class world, it, that character is not static staying inside the, in, in, the, um, in the academy. Mm. So it is a preenie with an afro wig on, on its head. Oh, so okay then. It's called the preenie vanguard or something. That they you that Vinny the that Prini Vanguard comes and goes. Oh, okay. So if the if for example if the Prini Vanguard actually left, all you need to do is go for a battle and and or maybe two or three battles, then the Prini the Vanguard will be back. Oh, so okay. once he shows up, when you can talk to him and say that oh you want to learn skills or you want you want to make, be stronger in class world, then you can go to the class world, and the level of the class world. The enemies of the and the level of the class world depends on which character you use. It, it's uh, it's basically based on the character. For example, if you have a level one hundred warrior and you use the class world, yeah, the class world will start at level one hundred. Ah, uh, okay then. Yeah, so it's character based. Mm. The class world as, so that is what we call the class world in this guy three, and for motions, motions is actually the home roam. Yeah. So when you when you're in the home room, you have to pass motions and stuff. Yeah, I've, so I've that's done when, that. Yeah. yeah. So that's when you actually get all the motions, like new clubs and 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 other things that you can do in the game. Yeah. But 
of course, because there are a lot of them are uh, NPCs. So basically, during the course of the game, you will need to you when you whenever you use it, you have to bring in things that actually they like and bribe them so that they yeah. st- they they go on your side. Mm. And what I what I did, I usually spend more money or time on the higher class reps. Yeah. So that because they have their vote has a lot more say as to compare to normal or lower class reps. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's how of course if you so example if you marginally didn't pass one motion and then you know that you you will be able to to fight through like to actually pass, force through the motion, then you can mm. do that. You can certainly do that. But the thing is if you do it too much, then all the ratings with all the other class reps of the relationship with you would go down. Oh, so it's okay. a lot more harder in the future for you to pass any motions. I see. Yeah, and uh, and also you don't really need. To, sometimes you don't really need to fight. What if when you try to force through emotion in a way that if you have, for example, level three hundred class rep that is on your side, mm. and then there are three level one hundred um, class rep there against emotion. Yeah. If you throw the level three hundred one onto the level one hundred ones. Then the level 300 one will level up and then it will change to a even higher level but pro your side class rep. Uh. So you can eliminate them one by one without actually fighting them. If you know that, for example, certain class rep, you, for example, sometimes they have like level 5,000 class rep inside the, in the classroom. Yeah. If that class rep actually is on your side, all you need to do is just throw him on, on that particular class rep onto other class rep that are like level 2,000. Mm. Then it will become level seven thousand class rep that is on your side. I didn't know that. See, this game is huge. There's just so many different mechanics that I just like because I played this game for heaps long and I did not know like that you could enter class world or anything. I've probably unlocked it. I just haven't talked to the mm-hmm. guy to go there. So yeah, so that I mean that is that is the the homeroom passing motion part of the homeroom. Mm. And as for the school clubs, basically the the homeroom itself also has the school clubs and, and adjacent kind of so the adjacent kind of relationship is almost the same as the, the previous guy games. But I think that adjacent one is basically if you put your desk next to the for example, if you put four like four characters around Mao, then yep. those four characters have a higher chance of scoring a combo attack on the enemy. Yeah, I've noticed that. So I've been, I don't know, I don't really use the clubs that much though. I only use the ones that give bonus to mana and experience if you put them next to particular characters so they get um, like 50% mana from the person sitting next yeah. to them. I only really use those clubs. I haven't really unlocked any other clubs that are useful. Oh, yeah. wait, the throwing one as well. I use the throwing one. Yeah, but the same thing, but the thing is if you're, for example, if for club, if you actually assign a mage, Mm-hmm. Um, as a club, like as a, for, as a captain of the club, mm-hmm. and then you as you you know majors, they are good with intelligence, but they're weak in everything else. Yeah, the like defense and and all those kind of stuff. Yeah. So what I did with my game is I have a mage, and then under the mage, so we are within the club that the mage is a captain of. I put, for example, an iron knight and two ninjas into mm-hmm. that. So whenever those the iron the iron knight and two ninjas actually level up, actually the mage will get a proportion of their increased attribute. Really? Yeah. So that means that the 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 speed and defense of and resistance of those of the mage, could which is very slow and usually they develop like they have really minimal growth, mm-hmm. they grow a lot faster. That is good news for me because I've I've recently been trying to unlock um particular classes. Yeah. So um, I have a lot of high level um, characters that I like to use over and over again because I've, I've just made them like really overpowered now. Yeah. And so starting again with fresh characters is so irritating, but yeah. um, they're getting there, but maybe I should make them heads of the club so they aren't so weak. Yeah. So yeah. So for example, the, because majors, they, they have a high missing rate because their, their, their speed is very low. Yeah. So, for example, my mage now she she has really high speed in the way that because I have a ninja next to like ninja under the club, mm. so you but nin, because ninja they actually have 
high resistance and high speed. Yeah. So when they level up, their their attribute level up a lot quicker. That yep. actually contribute to the growth of the mage itself. Yep. And for example, with the with the Iron Knight, because his defense um, attribute and his um, the other one is HP attribute are really high. Yeah. So when he level up, the mage defense and 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 HP goes up too. So you can cover all the different attributes that it's missing. For for the mage, yeah. Yeah, for the mage. That's kind of cool. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Hmm. I yeah, guess I'll so have to that play around a, with that. The more. relationship between the club captain and the club member. Mm, okay. Yeah, and of, of course you can use the club relationship to actually learn attributes or, or skills from other classes. Yeah, so, for yeah. example, now my 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 female fighter is actually using bows and arrows in a way that because I I need her because in a way that the fighter can have can move up uh, higher to higher places and yeah. has higher speed. So then it, the hit rate would be a lot faster and it has usually really high, high HP. Mm. So when it uses the bow and arrow, it actually it was quite deadly. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so I, and then for me, I usually only acquire skills that are not non-elemental because elemental skills sometimes don't really work to your favor. For example, if the boss is resistant to certain elements, yeah, yeah, yeah. So hmm. that's how 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 the class world and clubs and homeroom, all those kind of things work. Cool. I think I'm gonna have to take a look at trying to get into class world, and then I'll rearrange my clubs. I think. Yeah. So the, the, how you rearrange your club actually really matters, you know, in that kind of gameplay sense. Ah. Okay then. Thanks, Haven. I will have to look at Disgaea in another light. I think <laughs> it's just it's just the game is just so big it's just so humongous and the thing is every single game has like a different like a new mechanic or something yeah. in it so you have to learn the game over again it's like ah such a big game such a big game series yeah we just I talk- mean, oh my god <laughs> at the same time it's just I mean a lot of people for example one of my friends was saying that on um, there she re- reincarnated the characters and then it takes so long for them to be leveling up but I said well if you bring them into the item world like a high level item world mm. if for example your level one if you actually have a very high level weapon for that character yeah the, le- the a level one monk or level one uh, like geo monk which I just reincarnated yep. if you actually kill a level 500 kind of enemy yeah it goes up like 60 level in one go yeah yeah that's that's what i've been doing like um i reincarnate people but i don't start at like a level like a low level item i just put them in a high level item and then level up really quickly Mm -hmm. so that's cool yeah and and i mean the the thing is when if you for me whenever i don't reincarnate them until i know that i can reincarnate them to a genius class yeah yeah that's what i do as well so you don't lose any of the attributes like yeah, exactly. Them, yeah. Because they actually multiply onward. So if you actually re- re- start from right from the beginning, when you reincarnate them into genius class every time, then the attributes go a lot faster as yeah. compared to like normal, just normal. And I don't really like the normal desk anyway. Yeah. People, people <laughs> write on those desks and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, hope, I hope that helps with your disguise, right? Yeah, it does. I'll have to, yeah, go into it again, as I said. Um, hmm. So what kind of classes do you usually like most in disguise, right, at the moment? Um, I do like my mage classes. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, our non-elemental magic attacks are really good. Yeah. Um, I also have... Um, she is samurai or something. It's one of the NPCs you get, the special one. So it's the one of the delinquent girls. Oh, not the ninja, uh, one. Asuka not the ninja one. It's the other one. Oh, Asuka. Is it? Is that? Is that her name? Asuka is the one that looks like a samurai, right? Yeah, yeah, her. Yeah. So I use her lots. Like she does so much damage for me. She's mm-hmm. very um weak in defense and stuff, but usually she kills everything around her or dodges the attacks that um yeah coming at her so she's like super overpowered for me mm-hmm. um i also have um it's a monster i don't actually know um what it's called what, what does it look like um it's like a floating guy with like his legs and fists on fire oh okay yeah yeah um i can't remember what it's called but um mm-hmm. 
they're so powerful. The only thing that annoys me is that it has no area um, attacks. It can only really attack one thing at a time, but yeah. at the same time, it has a high counter rate. So when things yeah. attack it, it attacks back afterwards. Yeah, that's and true. It can yeah. it out in one go. Um, that's the same for the brawler, like the fist class. So I like I like characters that can counter a lot. Yeah. Um, just because it's just taking it, take you could take out enemies a lot faster than just you know going one by one and stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What about you? Um. I use um in the sky three. I use the printy a lot. Oh really? Yeah, because the printy in the sky three is on the only is the only game. I think that is the only printy in the the, the sky games actually is useful. Really? Yeah, because uh, if you actually look at the attributes, the the printy attribute goes up really <laughs> fast. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, then and the compatibility with weapons and armors are very high. Huh. If you if you look at the yeah, so that is the only I think the Skyfire is the only game that actually provides a strong printing. Oh, because I've yeah, skipped, so I use the printing a lot. I just skipped the printy because I knew um, I didn't like using them in, in any uh, in any of the other Disguy games. Ah. So I didn't actually give them a go in this one because I was like, well, how different can a printy really be in the third game? But I guess I was wrong. Um, yeah. I'll get. I have to. Maybe I'll make one. I'll I'll read. Yeah. So it. for example, the one that I have currently, well, I have reincarnated him. Just reincarnated him into printy god, and all <sighs> the attributes is one hundred and twenty five and one hundred and thirty five percent. Really? Yeah. Wow. Across the board, yeah. What are the skills like? So, what have you got in like? Um, I like the the printy bomb one. Basically, if you level up the printy bomb one and give the printy, so the printy, I think the weakness of printy is it doesn't move around that much in in terms mm -hmm. of range, but all that you can um you can solve that problem equipping them with like shoes and all those kind of things. Mm. And you know, if if you go through the item well, if you actually pass through motions, you can actually uh, later later in the game they open they will open up motions that you can actually increase the movement and and height on jump height of the all those of those items. Oh, okay. So that so I actually leveled up those items and then let the printing to be able to go around a bit further. Mm. And um, yeah, so. I use a lot of printy bombs and I use a lot of printy dance. So whenever the printy got surrounded, the printy dance can actually kill off more adjacent characters, like adjacent enemies in one go. Uh, maybe. Yeah, so printy is a lot. This is the one that I use a lot in this game. But but I didn't like printy in the first and second game at all. I, I, yeah. I just think that they're useless. It's just that when I look at this one, I think, oh, how come it looks different? So I went, I gave it a go, and then I said, oh, wow, it is really good in this game. <laughs> but I think in this guy, for the printy become useless again. Really? Yeah, I tried uh, uh, this guy for a little bit, and then I looked at the printy. Ah, oh, so, so they actually know that printy is overpowering in, in this guy. Three, they revert it back to like a this guy one or this guy two kind of printy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe I just I haven't had a. Go I know that this guy four exists. I've seen the box like around in different um stores, but I haven't actually gotten it. I don't think I will unless it comes out on a handheld. Like I have this thing where I can't play yeah. tactics games on like a console that works with TV. I have to play yeah. it on a handheld. Yeah. You know? So Yeah, so for me I use a lot of archers. Oh really? So yeah, so for example Azuka I, I she can use bows and arrows. So she's using bows and arrows. I have um the male and female archer. I actually have changed the warrior into an archer. I changed the female uh, fighter into archer. <laughs> I changed Armats into a, into an archer. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, so because I the think... archer has a very good has two very good skills that I use a lot. Really? One of them I think is called punishment or something. I can't remember what punishment. And the so basically one of them is uh, one attack. The other one is like a panel of five, and they're both non-elemental. Uh, oh no! So, I think I know what you're. I think it's called attack punisher. Yeah, I have. A, I have one yeah, archer. Yeah. Attack um, punisher is the one one, and the, the other one. Yeah, I think a skewer something is the the one with the five panels. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so those two, I use them a lot because it can clear out the the enemies quite quickly. Mm. And yeah, so I lot use a lot of archers. I use the Mothman a lot. Mothman. Oh yeah, they're pretty cool because they. Yeah, the Mothman um, is good for the item world because it has a lot, like for really long range to move around. 
Yeah. So if you don't really want to spend too much time on that particular level, and the because sometimes because the le- the dungeons are randomly generated, mm. so sometimes they are really annoying to get through. So with the movement, they can basically go anywhere. Yeah. Okay. And now also have a mask hero. So the mask hero and the movement move work together in the item world to so that I can get through the item world quickly. Hmm. I have one mask here. I have the Prinny guy. Mm-hmm. Um. So he's a masked warrior, yeah, I think. Yeah, that's a masked hero, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what he does, because he doesn't learn any special skills on his own. He yeah. only has weaponry, so... The good thing with the masked hero is because his movement is fly, so it, w- it would not be blocked by any character enemies or blocks. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the morph- both the Morphman and the masked hero are the only classes that actually use fly movement. So anything in, in front of you blocking your way, they, they would not block you. Oh, actually, the, the monster that I like using um, can fly through things as well. The guy with his hands and feet on fire, I don't oh, know yeah. what they're called. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's they right. Yeah, that so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a lot easier. Um, so, on, yeah, so I, for, for example, if you level up the, the movement, then that means they can move around very quickly. And the good for, for the mask hero, I use fist in a way that because if there is a gatekeeper, you can use triple strike to actually move the gatekeeper out of, because you can lift the gatekeeper, but you can yeah. move it out to, through, you, through your skills. Through your skills. So if you use triple strike on them, then they will move the gatekeeper off the, the gate. And then you can just apply the movement and fly through the, to, to that gate and then clear that level. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so then uh, those I think the, these are the, the classes I use most. Um, I do level. Uh, I I use the geo the geo panel guy a lot because if I do think that you need that for the um, item for world. the item world. Yeah, yeah. I'd imagine that be. I don't. I I'm not sure. If, no, I think I have unlocked it. I just haven't. Um, I guess I didn't really want to level up another class from zero <laughs> from like. You know how um, yeah. as you level up a class, you unlock like higher versions of that class? I just didn't want to start with. The yeah, so level. I mean, the, once you unlock the class world, the leveling up of reincarnated area or new characters is a lot easier in a way yeah. that because the, all the bonuses you get are basically experience. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't want, for example, if you have a, if you know that, for example, you can go through a high level class world, all you need to do is before you kill off the last character, you put that new reincarnated character into, on, into the field. Mm-hmm. And then when, when you clear that dungeon, that particular level, all the experience went to the new character. Mm. Okay, then. All right, maybe I'll, I think maybe I've just gone about, I've just missed a lot of things that would help me in mm-hmm. Disgaea. So I haven't. Like I didn't know how to use a class world or get to it at all, so mm-hmm. maybe I will play this game for a lot longer now that I've, yeah, I guess figured. Oh, you've helped me figure it out like mm-hmm. different things I can use. This game is just too big. This game is yeah. just too. And too also big. in the item world, sometimes you you, you encounter a vendor actually tell, sell you experience point potion. Yeah, I've actually um, they're pretty cool but i don't encounter them i don't find them that often Mm -hmm. um and for some reason when i go into those um you know the green panels that you find in the item worlds that pop you to different rooms i keep Mm -hmm. getting the guy who will kill off the um the boss i think it is or something and Mm -hmm. i keep getting the world where it just there's a whole bunch of chests and it's like a platformer and you have to jump all over yeah i freaking hate those two worlds because that's all i see i hardly see any of the other ones so you haven't met with the item world predictor or fortune teller no i haven't yes the fortune teller actually could well the fortune teller is kind of a hit and miss because it could drastically increase your level or, or reduce the level of your item oh god yeah, and then uh, there's there are rooms that you fight seven enemies of the same class. Mm. If you clear that, you actually go up three levels. Oh. Yeah, and the in some of the levels in the cl- item world, there are item spheres. So if you clear that level with one of your characters holding up the uh, item sphere, I think it goes oh, up five yeah. levels. Yeah, yeah, I've had that like twice. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, Disguise 3 for me is a lot of things to do. And I, I think I 
do I mean I play the Sky One a lot, but I think I play when I replay it on this on DS. I I really spend a lot. I spend a half a year and a half in it. Mm. And then the Sky Two, I play quite a bit. And the Sky, I think the Sky Three, they really improve the um, mechanisms a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but, but when not- I tried the Sky Four, it seems that. They tried to do something different, but which I at this point I didn't really like it that much. But maybe because I'm just still on the Sky Three, so I actually yeah. haven't got time to appreciate the Sky Four. Yeah, when I jumped into the Sky Three, it had been a uh, quite a long while since I'd played one and two, so it was kind of like jumping into a fresh the Sky thing without remembering any of that stuff from mm-hmm. the other games. So. Yeah, I guess jumping from three to four straight away would kind of be like jarring. You wouldn't. I yeah. mean, if you're so used to three, going into four with new mechanics and stuff would just be like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't yeah, like this. Four has new new mechanisms, and they use the turf system, and then they use something very different. Like um, they have new classes. They have removed certain classes that I like, and I just thought mm, they're just classes I like. I I don't. Like them removing those classes. Yeah, some of the female fighter was gone. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. In 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 the new and and I think the geo panel guy was gone. They replaced it with something else, but then it's not as easy to unlock as in the past. Mm, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. So, so apart from the sky free, what else are you playing? Um, I've. Just like nothing new, unfortunately, because I guess there hasn't really been much on the RPG front of things mm-hmm. when it comes to games. But um, I have recently started um, to play like old Super Nintendo RPGs. Oh, nice. So one of my absolute favorites was um, I think it's Seiken Densetsu 3, which is Secret of Mana 2 or 3 mm-hmm. in English. It was never officially translated to English, but there oh. was an unofficial patch of it like online. Yeah. Um and it's just a fantastic game and it's um gameplay system is just it was really cool for that kind of um I guess for the the for that time the system. So um it was it's real time battle. So it's it's 2D sprites and stuff. So you're locked onto a screen with your characters, but you um, you attack in real time mm-hmm. and the monsters attack in real time. So you have to react quickly sometimes unless you get overwhelmed. I guess that's where the difficulty comes from. Mm-hmm. And um, it was cool that there were six different characters that are six different classes mm-hmm. and you could pick your right from the get go you can pick which character you want to play and then two other characters you want to take with you for the rest of the story and mm-hmm. the beginning of the game was different depending on which character you chose and um, later on in the game you can evolve your character classes into either a light version or a dark version and you can do that twice <laughs> really? And, um, yeah, and it's really cool because for depending on which class you go to, you can learn different sets of skills. Mm-hmm. So you can make up a like um, a really diverse team depending on which of the three uh, characters you pick, which um, I guess higher level class you decide to evolve them to. And um, it's just I don't know, and the story's really good as well. And it's just one of the best RPGs that I've played. And I just remembered it the other day, and I was like, you know what? I want to play it again. So I, I got it again, and I'm playing it. Um, although I haven't really gone that far into it, so I can't really talk. I don't really have that much to talk about it. I only beat, like, the first big boss. Mm. And um, that was difficult because I died three times. Because <laughs> um, I, I picked – I guess one of the uh, the hardest things about this game is there are some mage classes – uh huh. Um, well, there's a cleric and there's a mage girl, and I chose the mage girl as my main character. Oh, and the okay. thing is, you don't get to unlock magic until after you beat the first boss. Oh, really? So I was like, I had picked the. You I think I got the wrong class. Kind of. I picked the mage, and then I had a cleric as my healer, and I have um, the Amazon to back me up as my. Um, I guess my muscle, but I guess it wasn't enough because I died three times. It's just sheer luck that I beat it third time. And um, <laughs> it was difficult. I was like, I, I need magic. Give me my magic. So mm. 
That's cool. After I got that magic, I just wipe everything out, though. Um, yeah, so it's a good game. Secret of Mana 2, Seeking Densetsu 3. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe have a look at it. But mm-hmm. it's I'm playing it on PC on an emulator, so um, since it's not available, I think, mm-hmm. any other way, unless you want to play it in Japanese. Yeah. Says. yeah, I mean, there's an annoying thing about RPG sometimes is like they don't they they don't come out over in the West. Yeah. yeah, I could I could talk about like types of games that I would want to play but are never translated into uh, English. But they're not they're not RPGs. They're visual novels. So. I mean, the the situation is getting a bit better. I mean, like I was quite surprised at, for example, games like Last Story and um, Sino. Saga, or not Sino Saga, yeah, Sino Saga, Last Story, and Sino Blade Chronicles all, all eventually came out in, in the West because yeah. they were so Japanese RPG. And I thought they probably were thinking there's no market and they're not going to release them, but then I was very happy that they did. I think they're starting to realize that some people are um, more willing to try out different games now that I know top games at the moment um over in the west are pretty much exactly the same as each other yeah you know? so things that are so people who want a little bit um more challenge mm-hmm. um something more challenging in their games that aren't to do with oh find this in a really hard place or you have to do this because something glitches you know yeah. um something that takes skill and time and effort i mean they'll go to a jrpg straight away um or Something like that. Yeah, know, for some yeah. reason, they're just they're hard for no reason. Yeah. I think a lot of people maybe, I don't know, maybe they thought that, well, JRPG is about level grinding and, and stuff. But for me, is the level grinding actually is rewarding. And, and, mm. and I really, one of the things I don't like about like Western RPG is they cap your level so early in the game. Mm. Like sometimes level 40 or level 50, you are capped. And, and you... For me, once once it's kept, I basically lose interest in continue playing it because, well, what what am I supposed to do now? Yeah, there's no like extra things after you've reached the max level, or yeah. um, I don't know. I guess there's not yeah. So for example, Tales of Grace is F. I can go beyond level one hundred, and yeah. I continue have other things I can do to actually improve my character, and, and the improvement that you did to your character actually shows up in a way that it helps. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, level, for me, level 99 is still okay when if you want to cap it at level 99 because if you want to get to level 99, it's quite a bit of time and achievement that you need to do anyway. Yeah. But, so, for example, one of the things I don't really like about the... Um, like, well, I need to talk about that again. FF thirteen in a way that means <laughs> if you max out the um, the crystarium so quickly, mm. and then all the all you have left to do is, oh, I will just collect this and that for ultimate weapon. Oh, okay, I finished that. I will just try to finish off some of those optional bosses who are really cheating. And no matter what equipment you 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 so there, I think there was a boss that I equipped three ribbons, and they were all level up like max out ribbons. Yeah. And every time it did the status attack, it doesn't it doesn't actually resist the status attack. Oh, what? Yeah. It's lame. So it's like by chance. The so-called fifty percent is by chance. Mm. That's so I have, when I think I think when I actually equipped three ribbons, it became like eighty one percent resistance to all status. Yep. So I, I brought the character into the battle thinking that will, I'll use the character as a healer and an attack at the same time. So, but then whenever the status that that comes, yeah, all status shows up. Huh. Then that is the point that I actually stopped playing the game because I thought it was <laughs> ridiculous. I, I give you props to just the fact that you tried to play it. Really, <laughs> like I just I quit because I was so bored, and I was like, "This is I can't do I can't do this anymore." I quit, and then I heard there was a second one, and then I heard there was a third one, and I was like, "I can't do yeah. this. This stop it, Phoenix." I'm hoping at E3 they actually have something good to tell us. Yeah, like I'm so because at the um was it, I think it was unveiling of the announcement for PS4 or whatever the yeah. guy came out like the Final Fantasy guy was there and he said, "Hey." I have some news for you, but you have to wait until E3. And then it disappeared off stage. That was it. Yeah. So he better have something fantastic. Um, yeah. 
I have read that um, Kingdom Hearts 3 is confirmed for the next generation console, and um, oh, that's so about the it, actually. Kingdom Hearts is not like spin-off Kingdom Hearts. No, this is actually like the next one. The canon one. Yeah. I, the, in my mind, personally, I only think one um, chain of memories and two exist. Everything else doesn't exist. I don't know who these other people are. <laughs> they aren't it, like I have. I don't like them. Just go away. Mm-hmm. Um, I just can't. I don't. Yeah, I think. Um, I think they're going. I think. Um, in is it in the states or in Japan? They have actually have released a chain of memory on PS3 with a revamp uh, system. So it, I, I didn't. I, I try chain of memory on G- GBA Advance. Yeah. Uh, GB. Yeah, Game Boy Advance. And at that time, I just hated the card the card battle system. Um. You can, I think it's the 1.5 remix is coming out on um, PS3. It should be coming yeah, out soon. I think it's pre ordered now. Change the mechanics to the, the Kingdom Hearts mechanics. Yeah, um, I will get that. I think. So, so I'm quite looking forward to that one because I would get that. Because I, I do. I, I do think the chain of memory story is quite interesting and I think it's very important to to find out what's happening between one and two. It's just that when I tried to play on, on uh, GBA at that time, I just couldn't deal with the, the cap battle system. Yeah, um, it was a bit difficult to get through. I just, um, I kind of just pushed through it because I wanted to know what the story was and I really, really wanted to play as Riku because I was completely in love with him at the time. Please don't judge me. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just really wanted to... And, it, the story was great. It was fantastic, and it was relevant to yeah. what was going to happen in the next game. And yeah. um, it was just awesome, right? Yeah. Um, the card system was a little eh. And I remember at the time when that came out, um, a lot of games had like a card system as well, like the Metal Gear Solid game and something else. Yeah. So maybe I don't know all the. I think Japanese it was a trend at that time. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't think it caught on over here in in the West. Yeah, I mean the so. thing is, I I play some card system. I, well, I utterly hate the better the the one in Kingdom Hearts, the Chains of Memories, mm. and I played the first um, Lost Kingdom on the GameCube, which is also a card battle system. Oh, really? Yeah, it like it was so frustrating to finish the last boss in a way that, like, because in in Lost Kingdom is an actual RPG, so the card system is like. You have to cast the card to the direction of the enemy, so that the the end result summon will actually go go after that particular enemy. Uh. So a lot of time we, we are trying to run around, and then you're throwing away cards and stuff. So your your summons are just all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so and the Lost Kingdom two, I tried it for a little bit. I just couldn't do it anymore. Mm. And then I think the only card system at that time I think was really well developed was um. I don't know whether a lot of people know that RPG is called Baton Kaitos. Yes, I do know. I have a friend who loves that game. He comes from game, that yeah. game. Yeah. I love I utterly love that game. Hmm. I, I think in, in terms of bot card battle system, this is that one is the best card bot um, card battle system that you can get. Mm, okay. And yeah, and the and the thing is for that game you actually reward you with better card if you actually grind your level and, and do all those optional stuff. Mm, okay then. Yeah, so I'm glad that the whole card battle system phenomenon is gone now. Yeah, I, I think it's just like I don't. Know, I kind of felt it was unnecessary ish. Like I don't understand why they decided to try it in Chain of Memories. I really don't because it was just such a different way to play the game um, yeah. compared to Kingdom Hearts. But I guess maybe it was because they were trying to figure out a way to. Um, have a gameplay system that, or a battle system that was challenging but still kind of real time because you can't have completely real time battle, I guess, on the DS that looked amazing for yeah. that style. So yeah. um, I don't know. I guess you you either love it or hate it. Yeah. I loved it though, but that's because the story saved it. Um, but yeah, yeah one uh, chain of memories and two of Kingdom Hearts. Only ones I I can. Uh, you Except, consider it as canon and yeah. as Kingdom Hearts games. <laughs> but the thing is, every single game they've released is canon. So um, I'm worried for Kingdom Hearts 3 because I won't know what's going on. 
Yeah, I mean, they kind of wrap up the story in Kingdom Hearts 2. So I don't know. I, that's why I, I, when they released all those spin-offs, I was thinking, oh, because they wrapped up the story in Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2 so maybe they need to do all those spin-offs to, to enrich, in quotation mark, that particular world. But then I was thinking, yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3 would be good, but where could the characters go? Uh, oh, you know what I forgot? Mm-hmm. Um... Dream Drop Distance, that was on 3DS. See, that's how much of an impact it had in my life. Um, <laughs> Dream Drop Distance, right? Um, yeah. What was it? I think to become a real Keyblade Master, yeah. Sora has to go through um, some kind – he has to go through a test, right? And he goes with Riku as well yeah. because um, – He's also trying to become a Keyblade Master, which is stupid because in the very first game, it was like there can only be one Keyblade Master. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the things I don't really understand. Somehow everyone has a Keyblade now and everyone can become a Keyblade Master. It's just like, game, stop it. Stop, right, stop it. Yeah. But like... Now they're saying that there's um, seven Keyblades of Light that can stop the darkness that's coming. And already in my head, I can count like eight or nine people that could be that seven. Because I'm pretty sure, um, I think it's Aqua Terra and Ventus. Yeah. Those three from um, Birth by Sleep, which um, I never Birth finished the game, by yeah. the way. Yeah, I never finished that game. So I don't actually know what's up with those three, but I'm pretty sure they're, one of, they're three of the seven. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Sora, Riku are definitely one mm-hmm. of like part of the seven. I'm not sure about Kairi. She got a Keyblade and then nothing happened after that. Or she had a Keyblade for like two seconds and then nothing happened. I think right? Riku was supposed to be a Keyblade Master too. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, he's also a Keyblade Master. So that's another one. Yeah. Um, and then there's another person in Dream Drop Distance who ends up using a Keyblade. And it's the last person I wanted to have a Keyblade. Right? Uh-huh. Um, the only reason why I think he got one is because he's a popular character. Yeah. And people wanted him in the game more, so he's back. Yeah. Uh, that much- <laughs> so you really don't like that character? <laughs> well, see, I liked that character until the fandom ruined him, and I can't just... I don't want him there anymore. Um, and so, yeah, like, I don't know what they're going to do with the Kingdom Hearts um, series, oh, uh, but yeah. I really hope that they just cut it off at three. And if they decide to make any more Kingdom Hearts games, they will use different characters and just yeah. completely, they'll just lop off this world, cut off this universe, make it finished, and then just make a whole new world with new characters. Yeah, They're but not it's Square Enix. It's yeah, Square Enix we're talking about. I don't want them to run Kingdom Hearts into the ground like they did with Final Fantasy and Thirteen, Like... Yeah. 13 just ran my love for Final Fantasy into the ground. They, the only way they can save Final Fantasy for me now is if they actually finish and release Versus 13, which I'm hoping they will say something about at E3, but it doesn't seem like it's likely. <laughs> <sighs> that is the passion we see in RPG players. Yeah, like, oh my gosh. So much I can say about Square Enix stuff right now, but I, <laughs> like I should have started that. <laughs> <laughs> I, it seems like every RPG podcast we have, we end up at the Square Enix "I love you, I hate you" kind of conversation. <laughs> but yes, I'm sorry if I'm scaring anyone right now, but I'm very passionate about these games. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that is good. I mean, you have to be passionate about the games, otherwise, what's the point of playing that? Yeah, it's actually been a long time since I've... Because these games have been released quite a few years back now. Yeah. Um, I can't think of a game that's actually gotten me that fired up and actually kept that kind of passion in my heart. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's lots of games where I've gotten really excited about it and then I've completely... Like right now, I know I've gotten excited about heaps of games. Mm-hmm. But I can't remember what they are anymore. But I will always remember that. I love Final Fantasy all the times that, you know, I finish all those side quests and um, mass level my characters, you know, finish off that, that sphere grid, you know. Yeah. I will always love that. But no other game has really managed to... Yeah. to have... Oh, actually, no, wait, I lied. Persona. Persona is definitely in there. Shin Megami Tensei series. Actually, there's a, there's, there's a fourth um, canon Shin Megami Tensei game that came, just came on, on 3DS. In Japan. Um, isn't it the Fire Emblem Cross... Is the Fire Emblem Cross Shin Megami Tensei one? No, no, it's a new one. It's a, oh, really? It's a, it's a canon one, yeah. So it's the fourth the fourth main game in the series. 
Oh, fantastic. Well, I can't yeah. wait to see over here then. <laughs> yeah, so I think it, uh, it sold through the roof in the, during the first weekend. I think it was the first place, uh, like and the top seller in the last week, and then like first week uh, on sale, and it actually boosts the sales of 3DS. I mean, that is how much a game can affect a console. Yeah, that's um, maybe we can save this conversation for um, Game Only podcast because I would like to talk about it just how consoles are going yeah. right now, what direction they're going in, and how ridiculous things are getting, and if they're actually going to get better <laughs> or worse. That um, sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good conversation topic. We should probably dedicate one episode to that. Yeah. And we should actually involve Dan and, and, and Richie about that. Yeah, because I'm sure they have lots to say about it, especially yeah. the Xbox. <laughs> Hopefully we more than just about Halo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> so oh, Wow, so there's another, that is another episode of our RPG RPG podcast. Yeah, already. That's pretty, pretty Time epic. Flies, eh? Yeah, it does when you talk about games. It really does. Yeah, <laughs> especially when you talk about something you are passionate about. Oh, God. <laughs> Devon Square Enix, why do you do this to me? I like it's really bad. It's like a love hate relationship. I want to give them another chance, but it's mm-hmm. somehow in my heart I know they're not going to change. They're just why is it like this? <laughs> so, dude, are you going to buy the redeeming version of FF14 at all? Um, actually, my friends and I who uh, we recently quit Terra. So, if you follow the game, you quit podcast, Terra. Yeah. Um. So that's wow. After- so actually, you quit Terra. Yeah, uh, it's because we all hit max level and we got bored of it. Oh, okay. So um, I've unsubscribed. I mean, since it's a free-to-play game, I can go back and play anytime I want, and my characters will always be there. Yeah. Um, and I don't have to pay anything. But um, they, there's just not enough end-game content to keep me interested. Uh, okay. uh, so, But we are having, like, we made friends on there, and now we talk on Skype, and we're, we've been looking, looking mm-hmm. for different MMOs to play. I will um, probably... Um, elaborate on this on another podcast, but we've been looking for MMOs to play, and there's just nothing out there that really catches our attention or is really amazing. Um, and we don't want to go to WoW, so <laughs> <laughs> you're still resisting thinking, WoW, right? Oh well, no, just because um, that doesn't interest us either. Like after playing this action MMO and getting into it, there's no other good action MMOs out there that we yeah. really like. And um, a couple of us have just researched and researched and. Like, there's just nothing out there. So um, we're hoping that the next Final Fantasy fourteen installment will be good. Yeah, I hope that would be the case too. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, uh, the original one is just a pain to play. It's bad, and it yeah. doesn't look very good either. Yeah. Hopefully it's uh, a lot better. It's coming out in August for those... Um, or yeah. wondering, um, there's. I think the beta is happening very soon. So if you want to get in on that or try to get in on that, go to the website and um, try and apply for it. Uh, make sure you do the survey, by the way, mm. um, and that'll probably better your chances of getting in. So yeah, there's that. Cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this seems that that means that in, in, in our next. Gamolio podcast. We have a lot of things to talk about too. That's which is great. Yeah, maybe I'll uh, I'll talk about my Disgaea experiences after I've actually um, found the other half of the game that I've been missing. <laughs> this time, um, yeah. Oh, and hopefully I should have some gameplay videos out soon. I'm gonna try and start recording things while oh, I play them on the PC. Um, hopefully people will watch that. I don't know. If cool. Anyone will be interested in my hilarious reactions to things? I talk a lot to myself when I play games, especially ones that I haven't played before. So. Well, I do that too. Sometimes I get frustrated. My cat will look at me and say, oh, why is he frustrated looking at the TV? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, I guess we should wrap this up. This cool. Time. Yeah, we should. So uh, thank you for everyone. Yes. Thank you for listening. And of course, if you have any questions or comments or you want us to talk or play a a specific game, please leave a message at um, gameolio.com. Yep. Um, I'm pretty sure we have a Twitter as well, Mm -hmm. which is pretty much Gameolio as well. Gameolio everything. Gameolio all the things. Yeah, Gameolio (laughs) is the best. Yes. 
And um, I guess we'll catch you in the next episode. Cool. Cool. Okay, okay, bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks.